It's a new year filled with new unknowns. We're coming off yet another season of uncertainty. A year, if we're honest, filled lots of us with fear. We've allowed our eyes to drift and wander. So God, as we head into this year, fill our eyes with wonder. May we focus on the things that you care about, not on our shoelaces. Remind us of Hebrews 13, 6. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So with Jesus interceding for us, what can come against us? When his joy comes new every morning, what is left for sadness to claim? If nothing can separate us from your love, then what room does hatred have to take hold? When you make known to us the path of life, how can we ever lose our way? If you uphold us with your righteous right hand, how can we be afraid of falling? God, we commit to lay our plans at your feet once again, for you know the plans you have for us. So as we go into this new year, we will focus on you, God, because what can man or our careers, our schools, our families, our thoughts, our doubts, our fears, our insecurities. What can any of these things do to us? Nothing, because our trust, our faith, and our hope are in you, God. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. And indeed, as Hebrews 13 says, the Lord is our helper. Would you stand, please, everyone? Oh, God, you are, you are our help. You are our helper to all generations. You will be forever and ever our shield and our eternal hope, oh Lord. You are the ancient of days and worthy of our praise. Oh, that is so appropriate. Let's sing that again. You are. You are the ancient of days and worthy of our praise. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast. Shadow of thy throne, still may we well sing. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received a frame from ever. Yes, he is. Oh, God. Oh, God. You are. You are our help. You are our helper to all generations. You will be forever and ever our and our days and worthy of our praise. A thousand ages in thy sight are like many showed as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Oh God, our help in past. Oh. 
thou our guide while life shall last and our eternity. Amen. All right. Oh, God. again you are you are the ancient of days and worthy of our praise could you bow your heads with me do, Jim do we want them to sit down let's go ahead and have them sit down here, okay Stan. thank you. you guys go ahead and sit down thank you this is um, this is a prayer for the beginning of a new year okay let's pray Lord of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we gather here this first Sunday of the new year in a mixture of hope and anticipation, fear, excitement, and expectation. We do not know what the year holds for us. There are things for which we are uncertain, our health and family, job security and finances. There is much to look forward to, weddings or anniversaries or baptisms, holidays to enjoy, friends with which to laugh. Lord God, the coming year is full of uncertainty and hope. Whatever the year holds for us, though, we trust you. Yes. And we place every day of this year in your care, knowing that as in the past, you are with us, That's right. caring for us with constant love. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we place ourselves into your keeping and dedicate our lives to your service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Well, friends, we're going to ask for you to respond in reading whenever you see the highlighted portions. Would you go ahead and, and repeat as a congregation as we uh, uh, enter this new year? We, we, we are so glad in this new day, but we're so glad in this new year as well. So uh, would you read uh, when you see the highlighted portions? Let me start us off here. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. This is the year that the Lord has begun. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to those who seek him. Great is your faithfulness. Sing that familiar refrain, everyone. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed thy 
hand hath provided. Great is thy faith. Sing it again now. Great is thy faith. Again now. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And on this day of celebration, at this time when hopes are new, God, we gather as your people called to put our trust in you. You have made the world we live in. You have worked through history. In your plan we find our purpose. In your love are you. Long ago you sent our Savior to this world in deep despair. And in your word made flesh you came our life to know our sin to bear. Christ has died and Christ is risen. At this new year we proclaim. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus Christ is still. That's right. Yes, he is. Through two thousand years of changes, through these passing centuries, you have called your church to witness to Christ's love that claims and free. Each new generation hears you, each must find a fresh new way to make known the life you offer to the people in the day. On this day we know you clothe each yes you do and you make each sparrow sing how much more will you protect us with your guiding caring Spirit, lead us boldly in the future you have planned. The new year is often a time of reflection chance to look back on the past 365 days and remember. Sometimes the memories bring a smile, and other times they break our hearts. 
chances are you've experienced a bit of both this past year. The new year is also a time to look ahead, to imagine what could be, to scan the horizon with expectation and seek God's guiding hand. It's a time to strive for better, to live louder, love stronger, and be more of who God has created us to be. It's an opportunity for new beginnings, a chance to start fresh, to pursue God with a renewed passion, and to press on with all our hearts. The truth is, God has been faithful this past year, and that faithfulness promises to carry us through the next. As the new year begins, may we remember this one simple truth. In Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. Would you bow your heads, please, for a new year prayer? Oh, triune God, grant us your gracious, guiding presence as we enter the new year. As we join Christians of every time who have awaited Jesus' return, lead us into this new time, confident that your promises will be fulfilled. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. Spirit of truth, Call us to repentance at the beginning of this new year. Forgive us for past unfaithfulness, silence in the face of injustice, and inaction amid suffering. Move us from the desire to hoard our wealth toward faithful stewardship. Help us to share your gifts with those around us and with those who cry out for daily bread. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Prince of Peace, healer and reconciler, heal the divisions in your church and among the peoples of the world. As you prayed that, you, that we should all be one, give us new visions to enable that unity. Be with us on our Christian journey and with those sisters and brothers who surround us in the great cloud of witnesses. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. God of all ages, re release us from fear. Lead us forward, even as you have led your church forward from an empty cross and tomb through over 20 centuries. Be our companion as we walk unexplored paths into an, un an unknown future. Open us to new possibilities. Renew our hope. Grant us faith to move ahead. Be our companion until Jesus comes again. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, we do officially welcome you here this morning, in this new year, everyone. And we are excited in many ways, just for the many opportunities that lie ahead. Uh, but even just today, we're excited to have the Tamayos with us. And so uh, we will have them uh, up here momentarily. But let me first go ahead and just mention some of the things going on in the ministries of Lakeside. So next Sunday, a week from today, the 9th, we will be having our children's church uh, get going once again, and we begin our Sunday school time. So that will get underway. The Sunday school gets underway at 9 a.m. We look forward to that. Thank you, Margie Newton, for all you're doing and overseeing that. And uh, let's see here. Let's uh, also uh, make mention of what's happening after the service today. Um, it's been a wonderful Christmas celebration, and we've celebrated in many wonderful ways. Uh, unfortunately, we at some point have to take these down, and so uh, we'll be doing that after the service today. For those who are available, happen to be sticking around, lending a hand, so thank you with that. Uh, on behalf of Stan and Jeannie, you know, Pam and I just want to give our uh, uh, most humble, most humble thanks, Lakeside for your generous Christmas gifts. Uh, we are overwhelmed, we're blessed, and uh, I think I can speak for us all that it is a, a sheer pleasure and privilege being able to serve with you and to grow with you on this wonderful journey. So thank you very much. 
And uh, last of all, I do want to mention some birthdays and anniversaries. And so uh, happy anniversary uh, to uh, the Vickers, Travis and Stacy. I have an anniversary today. And then uh, the Dobbins, Chase and uh, Shana, have an anniversary coming up on the 6th. And then happy birthdays. Uh, um, Millie uh, McFerrin has a birthday coming up on the 6th. And then today, today our own Terry McGann has a birthday. So happy birthday to you, Terry. And for those of you who happen to uh, know Joanne Abbas, she shares a birthday with Terry. That's great because they have the same day, so it helps us to remember that. And so happy birthday to you, Terry. And uh, Joseph has already gone far, far beyond what's expected by taking uh, Terry out to have a hot chocolate this morning. So he's, he's filled his quota for the birthday celebration. And so, Stan, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. So, Terry, how did you get out of the whole birthday uh, singing today? How, how did we get out of it? Well, always do that. Uh, do, it's I never too late. To do that. Maybe, maybe she got up thinking, you know, I look forward to that uh, birthday song. Yeah, well, let's, let's do it. Let's get prepared here. All right, Lakeside. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Terry. That's our dramatic pause for you there, Terry. A happy birthday to you. We love you, Terry. Happy birthday. All right, thank, thank you, Tim, you, for doing that. You, you bet, you bet. Well, hey, it's... um. It's an honor to be here with you all. Um, today's the first Sunday of a brand new year, isn't it? We got through Christmas, we got through the New Year's, and sometimes it feels like we've survived the busyness and all the activity, but it's good. It's good, and it's always interesting to me, this new year, what does the Lord have in store for us, right? Uh, so next week, just real quickly, um, Sunday school, we're going to pick up where we left off two years ago, which sounds really strange <laughs> since we had Sunday school, so looking forward to that. And then next week, we're going to start back into Ephesians, or we're going to be focusing on Paul's challenge to the church, looking forward to that. And so um, this morning, it's an honor to have the Tamales here. Um, we've been looking forward to this so much, so guys, thank you. Um, there's something that uh, TJ told me a couple years back that's kind of stuck with me in regards to um, sometimes what we do, we sensationalize our missionaries. We, 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 we think for some reason that because they're either across seas or, or whatever, that they're serving the Lord there, that somehow we like put them up here and think, oh my goodness, look what they're doing for God. We sensationalize them. And um, Paul's charge to the church is that we're all the same in the eyes of God. All they're doing is just being obedient to God's call in their lives. Just like we have to be obedient to God's call in our lives. And so uh, I'm excited to hear what's going on with you guys. You guys have been here for a couple of months, right? So why don't you guys come on up and um, let the Lord use you. good we're good now all right there we go i don't know if you guys know it but i believe stan was uh my first youth pastor yes. yeah he used to go to all my soccer games take me out to lunch and encourage me in the lord and so it's really cool to be here and to share with you guys and with the church that he serves so thank you guys and good morning um i am tj uh over the past oh and this is my wife katrina hi hi <laughs> i'm terrible I'm at introductions um over the last uh, you know, five, six years, we have been serving overseas, um, and you guys have played a, a really important role in that because you guys have been supporting us, praying for us, and just doing so much. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts um, for everything that you guys have done for us. Um, this morning, we have the privilege to just kind of share with you what's been going on with us the last couple years. Um, so we have a PowerPoint that's going to help guide us, which I forgot the clicker. Oh, it's right here. Okay, clicker's right here. Um, and essentially, I just want to go over just kind of three main topics. 
um, some of the victories that we've experienced, some of the challenges that we've had, especially with the last COVID season um, and immigration and dealing with a lot of the COVID stuff. Um, and then what we have going on in our future. Um, and so I'm gonna jump right into it. That's Momo getting baptized, but we're gonna get there in a few minutes. Let's see here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and let my wife remind you guys of all the stuff that we do. So. Yeah. It's Kate Manage. Okay, yeah. So um, some of the things that we're able to be a part of in our ministry are these three things right here, um, Skate Manasia, which is um, an umbrella. It's, it's our, our nonprofit that we have here. And, um, and uh, one of our hearts um, in that is to partner with um, local churches um, where we're at in Taipei. And so some, we partner with two local churches over there. One is called Aroma Church, which is in the big city of Taipei. And one is called Fulong Church, which is in the Fisherman Village where we currently live. So it's 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 really far away from from everything. Um, yeah, and uh, some of our heart towards serving those churches um, and partnering with them is just hospitality, um, hosting teams when we can. And since COVID, we'll talk more about that. But since COVID has happened, that's kind of put a stop to that side of our ministry because we, people usually when we host teams it's it's mission other people coming in and from the outside um, other countries and whatnot um, but there's been other things that God has showed us that we can do to continue to serve in that way um, and so as we talk more about that and share um, more specifically what those things are you'll you'll kind of get the heart of that too and see what that is um, but yeah did I miss something did I miss anything no nope, you're good skate I think a lot of times people are like well those are the skateboard couple um, I don't think she's ever skated in her life. No, I've tried. And no. um, though we have a passion for skateboarders and though we've both seen the value in skate ministry, it's never been about skateboarder. I mean, it's never been about skateboarding. It's always been about skateboarders mm -hmm. and being a bridge from the skate park to the church. However, a lot of stuff that we have seen a little bit more fruit in has been what Katrina has been doing for hospitality, whether it's been the teams that we're hosting and discipling them or inviting people in for like a cultural exchange, whether it's from a small group or you know people that we meet and just, hey, this is what an American meal looks like and using that dinner setting to just be like, get to know each other mm -hmm. um, and then share the gospel. Um, some of the victories are small group. Um, yeah, so that's one of our hearts is like for, for me, what, growing up in my faith, um, discipleship really, um, the discipleship side was really important um, to my walk with God. And so that kind of looked like a lot of small groups or personal growth groups or the things Sundays were really important, but it was really what was happening outside of Sunday that really developed me in my personal walk. So as we've gone over there and we've seen that both churches and a lot of small churches like the ones we worked with, they actually don't have a lot of things like that. They don't have a lot of things where they connect with each other throughout the week. And so for me, that was something God immediately put on my heart, how I've been a part of things like that, and that developed my faith really in a really big way um, throughout my walk. So how can, I, how can I do that in this new place that we're in? So God really, um, really kind of put on my heart to just start small groups. And so that's, I mean, whether it's in the big city or it's in the fisherman village, I've, I've, we've run and I've run multiple small groups, a lot of time with women. And um, yeah, so these are the pictures of just some of those times when we've done it. There's even one in the corner when we had to go to Zoom and we continue to, to, to meet on Zoom every week. Um, so the one to the right, and with the girl in the white hat and then the two bottom ones on the right, those were from um, the Fisherman Village over the last two years before COVID kind of hit. Um, we would meet faithfully um, and uh, yeah, just kind of encourage each other in our faith. I would usually lead them through some type of curriculum and which there's a challenge in that because when you're doing cross-cultural ministry like this, you have to really get creative with um, 
the type of material that you use. And uh, some of the materials that we would use, uh, I would have to search really long and hard for things that were bilingual. Um, and so uh, I, I remember leading them through the book of Francis Chan's book. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but Crazy Love. And uh, that was a really good book because it was in English, but it was also in Mandarin. And so, um, yeah, and uh, also there was another resource that um, one of uh, our other churches that support us, we, we got connected with, it's called Right Now Media. I don't know, has anybody ever heard of Right Now Media? Yeah. And so um, we were used to that type of system for ourselves before we went to the mission field. And um, I was like, man, how can we get that over here? And so I started sharing Right Now Media with the churches, with mainly the, the church in Taipei, the bigger city, um, with their pastor and their community. And um, now, uh, Right Now Media, if you don't know what it is, it is, it's a resource for churches and congregations to continue to grow in your faith. And um, it just has tons of Bible studies, tons of Bible studies and tons of... It's like of the Netflix for Bible studies. Yeah, it's like Netflix for Bible studies. So it has tons of devotionals and Bible studies for youth, for marriages, for all every category you can think of for leadership. Um, and uh, the good thing about that is that there is a lot of videos and devotionals on that resource that um, it's all in English, but they have, they do provide Mandarin subtitles. But in Taiwan, they speak Mandarin and they can read some Mandarin, but they speak, tr they, s they can read traditional Mandarin. So it's a little bit different, but um, they still can understand that, that type of Mandarin. So um, God has really used that resource to disciple, um, help us to disciple people. And um, they've loved it so much that now it's, the church in Taipei in the city has actually bought a subscription for the church body and they're going to start now implementing um, creating more small groups throughout the week for people to grow in their faith in and so um, that's been really exciting um, and the the one up top in the corner um, on the left side that is our type that's the city um, small group that we lead that one is a co-ed one it's men and women and um, that one is also a bilingual one. So we are very challenged in our Chinese <laughs> every time we do that um, because we are, everything is we speak something it gets translated and that's like, so everything takes double the time when you're doing it. Um, but it's just such a blessed time and it's, and it's every time we get together and do that, it's just such a blessed time. For, for a little bit of context too, top left with the city church, that's a really narrow building. Um, and so that's where church is. That's actually second story inside of a coffee shop. Um, and so when we go to church in Taipei, we go to church in a coffee shop. And it's, what, 40, 50 people squeeze into something. That it Very gets really hot and long. humid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so we were actually in an earthquake there once, and it was like, oh, snap. And all the locals are just, like, kicking it, and it's like, no, no big deal, and all the foreigners are scared. Um, but, yeah, just a little context. It's a really narrow building because it's a city of 11 million people, and they build up. Mm -hmm. They can't go wide because it's, it's, it's small in size, but in population, it's huge. Mm -hmm. um, a couple other victories are... We have Momo. Momo was in the small group. I'm going to let Katrina cover the non-skate stuff, and then I'll cover the skate mm -hmm. stuff. So so Momo, she was actually in one of those pictures that you guys just saw. And um, Momo and her son had been going to um, the Fisherman Village Church, Fulong, for a while. Um, and her son had given her his life to the Lord, but she still hadn't. And we, I just felt really pressed to invite her to our small groups. And so she started coming, and we read, she went through the book Crazy Love with us, and um, she was just really moved by that. There was also a time um, in her life where she was working at a temple, um, a shrine, and um, she, she, her job was to clean up after people would burn incense. She was to clean up after them and whatnot. And um, Momo, uh, yeah, shared with her employers there that her son was um, going to be going to a mission trip um, or a trip to, um, to the U.S. with that church. And um, when they found out that her son was a Christian and that she goes there sometimes, they fired her and told her she can't work at the temple anymore. So she was without a job. And during that really difficult season, it was um, she still hadn't given her life to God yet. Um, and uh, it was just really a sweet time, though, to encourage her through that and pray with her and walk her through that process and watch God provide even a better job for her. 
and her family that is working much better for her situation now. But since then, um, she, we talked a lot to her about that, and she gave her life to the Lord, and we talked a lot to her about baptism and those things, and the pastor of that church was able to baptize her um, soon after we went through our first book with her. And so that's, this is Momo right here, um, yeah, getting baptized and making that decision. Um, I'll go ahead and do Calvin. Calvin's my dude. Uh, <laughs> Calvin's a great guy. Um, my first, first time I met Calvin was in the, the narrow church, Aroma Church, and um, it was communion day. It was our first day at Aroma Church. We didn't know anybody, and I just saw Calvin. He was just really vibing with the worship, and he was dancing, and he had his communion and his bread in his hand, and then all of a sudden, Calvin leaves and, like, runs downstairs, and he's gone, and I'm like, what's going on? Like, we we're supposed to take communion. This guy was, like, filling the worship, and then he just leaves, and then Calvin comes back up, no communion in his hand, and, you know, the church goes on to take communion, and Calvin didn't. Well, when it got done, I was interested, like, what happened to Calvin, you know? And so I introduced myself to him. I started talking to him, and I'm like, hey, just curious. You left. You were, you, were, you were singing. You were dancing. He was very approachable, so I felt like I could ask him this. And I was like, where'd you go? And he was like, man, I could not wait to take communion. I just, I just had to leave and go take communion and come up, and I was just so inspired by Calvin. Like, that smile, that's Calvin. Um, and just since then, Calvin has joined our small group. Uh, Calvin has been really, really on fire with the Lord. Uh, Calvin has been hanging out with our family. Um, Calvin has been texting me like crazy, when are you going to get back so we can go camping? Um, he, it, camping's not a thing in Taiwan. And so like, he's like, I explained camping to him, so he's like, let's go camping. So what this is, is us furthering those relationships where we can further ministering people and showing them uh, just Jesus and the gospel. And so Calvin... We love Calvin. And then, and this is me. And so we want to share with you guys just some. Th these aren't all the people that we've been able to be a part of their story. Um, these are just some. But um, yeah, th these ones really kind of stuck out to to us and and the seasons, that, especially since we've been in Taiwan. And um, this is Milu, and um, Milu actually is a, was a believe, is a believer, and she worked with the Fisherman Village and that ch that church that was there. She worked with that church. Um, there and she was doing ministry and some of you guys who have done ministry know that that there's lots of times you can get burnt out doing ministry you have to be you know um yeah very careful with 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 yeah how you um do that and how you look at it and and really inviting god in that, those spaces to really be your strength in those moments but it can get exhausting right um and so she was really pouring herself out pouring herself out pouring herself out and um, the minute, and she was doing a really great job and being a really big light, but she was, she was, she found herself really exhausted and found herself really burnt out. And um, she got to the point to where she decided she wanted to leave ministry. Um, and she was actually a part of that Bible study, my, one of my Bible studies during that time. And so um, we were able to really encourage her during that time and, and pray with her through that and through those doubts and through those challenges and through um, just, you know, really what God is trying to say to her through this. And personally and and um yeah she uh it was really challenging for her and that she went through a lot of difficult seasons um, but her faith um really grew in those moments in those in those dark times in those challenging times even when it had to do with the ministry um we were able to watch and see how her faith um was growing and how god was still providing for her and renewing you know uh, a, a new passion for what he had for her to do um, she did end up taking a break, and she ended up leaving that ministry, and throughout that time, you know, we were continuing relationship and praying with her, and she just said, you know, I remember her telling me, yeah, I don't think I want to do ministry anymore. I think I just want to be like a church attender and just go to church and, and leave and not really have many responsibilities, and um, I would just really like that, and uh, she, she went and worked at a flower shop for a little bit, and um, you know, you could just really tell, though, God had this call on Milu's life, you know, and she was kind of running from it, <laughs> and, um, we were just continued to pray with her and encourage her, and she really enjoyed that job at the flower shop, but then God opened up this new opportunity for her to work at this very popular ministry, um, in a big city, kind of around where she already was, and, um, she was really struggling with saying yes to that, but God had really just opened up that door for her, um, and we were praying with her, and she just, you know, through fasting and stuff, she really just felt like God told her to do that, and um, she did it. She stepped out and did it, and, you know, rewind. It's, she's been there already almost a year now, and oh my goodness, that it's just, she's she just has, God has just 
breathed new life into her and her purpose and to what she's doing. And um, she is just, you know, there's just a new joy to her. There's a new purpose to her as she stepped out in faith. You know, we, um, we got to watch her kind of just really blossom and bloom and, and what God was gifting her to do. Um, and, um, you know, and so through that, Neil has actually been a really big blessing even to our family. Um, she, uh, she has such a heart for our boys. She'll come and cook with them or she'll come and take them to the park. And, and that's really a blessing for us because we really don't have a lot of people that will do those kinds of things for us. I'm a homeschool mom, which we'll talk a little bit about that later. And so a lot of times it's just really them. They don't really have a lot of kids they get to hang out with and it's really just kind of them too, um, or it's us. And so um, other than the times we go out and do ministry and stuff, there's not really a whole lot of times where people w will take the time to you know, just hang out with them. So she's been even been a blessing back to us in many ways and just really kind of hanging out with our kids and loving on them. Um, and actually the ministry she works with now is actually with the youth. Um, and we've been able to partner with her in that, and um, we were youth pastors for about almost four years, so we know a little bit how to have some fun in that area while preaching the gospel. And so, um, she, uh, so yeah, we've been able to part with her and her, her team to really create a number of times of just um, almost like youth events where we just kind of hang out with the kids and do stuff like that. And so God has really opened up this partnership between um, us and this and Milu and um, and it's been just really this this you know give and give take and of take. just encouragement and just growth and prayer and um, yeah just partnership and so yeah so that's Milu we uh, love her uh, one special thing about Milu is that Milu's house in southern Taiwan um, it, it is a place where people go to worship um, and so her parents are the head keepers of that little you know worship place shrine um, and so Milu grew up in all the festivals. She grew up to an all that. And so when she became a Christian, there was a lot of tension in her household. Um, and to this day, there's still tension that she has to go back and forth with and play tug of war with because she is now a believer, which means she can show up to the family events, but she can't show up and partake in what the family is doing because of the worship and the idol worship that they're doing. Um, and so Taiwan is uh, really known for having more temples than any other place in the world per capita. And so they are everywhere. We can look out our window and we can see four temples. We can look down from, we live on the fourth story, we can look down into people's living rooms, we can see their shrines. It is everywhere. And so to see somebody like Milu come out of that lifestyle and then wrestle with doing ministry and then sacrifice and, and just say, yeah, I'm going to jump in and do ministry, it's, it's just really, really special. Um, skate ministry. Uh, I like skateboarding. I like skateboarders. Um, I'm really passionate about it. Um, skateboarding once was my idol. It's what I used to escape, and now it's what God is using to um, kind of like bring people into the kingdom. Um, so I've been skating for 21 years, and we have started a skate ministry. Um, yeah, I, I want to be good with time, so I don't want to go too too much into it, but right now we are focused in Taiwan. Um, we're, we're plowing. So when you hear Milu, when you hear Momo, when you hear Calvin, you know, those are stories that I don't know if you caught wind of it, but those aren't, it's not just the Tamayo family bringing them up. It is, you know, churches have been watering it. Other missionaries have been watering in, in those areas. And so we're seeing Milus, we're seeing Momos, and we're seeing Calvins that are being raised up. When we go into the skate culture, it's unengaged and un, and worked. And so we're plowing. Like, there's no Milus there yet. There's no Momos there yet. There's no Calvins there yet. And so our main thing right now is building relationship with them so that we can try to get involved into their lives so that we can start sharing the gospel with them. But in order for us to get through, especially in the Asian context, we have to build the relationship first. Um, and so I have been skateboarding uh, and consistently showing up and being intentional with my time with skateboarders funny story about this whole skate ministry thing isn't even with the skateboarder it's with the security officer who oversees the skate park that I go skate at it's under a bridge in Taipei um, and so everyone goes there to go skate and it's watched by a bow on Chinese name for security guard and so the bow on he does his hourly walk and I noticed that everybody ignored him and I'm like why are we ignoring this guy he's literally letting us skate here um, and so I started giving him a fist pound. Every time I was there, every, he would be the first person I walked up to, fist pound, fist pound, fist pound. After months and months and months of 
a fist pound. He finally came up to me and said, hey, thanks for finally giving me a fist pound. I've been working here for two years now. Everybody gives me a fist pound. And I just thought, wow, it's, you know, when we just do those really, really simple things, it's really, really uh, noticeable. There was another guy by the name of Xiao Ma. Xiao is little, Ma is horse. His name is literally translated to little horse. I think it's kind of funny. Um, and he has a really long, long hair, and it looks like a horse's mane. Uh, that's why he's called little horse. And he, he's really, really short, and he's really good at skateboarding. In fact, he has like a really big following in Taiwan. And, and I didn't know this, but he did not like foreigners um, because foreigners, um, they came and got all the skateboard sponsors, they got all the skateboarding money, and then they got all the girls. And I told Shamal, I don't want any of that. Like, don't worry, we're good. You don't have to worry about me. Um, but after time, um, I had a really, I had a really bad asthmatic cough. It's not COVID. And um, I, I was, this is pre-COVID, and I'm coughing like crazy at the skate spot to the point to where I just had to sit down. And I, I saw Shalma leave. And this is before really inter any interaction with, it, with him. And he, then he comes back with hot green tea, and then he gives it to me. And we sit down, starting to have, have a conversation. Um, and what I didn't know was that he had been watching for months and months and months of me skating and me filming the young skaters and me filming the older skaters and me bringing water and me br me giving a pound to the bow on to the, to the you know and he, i didn't know that he was watching this and he told me he's like you're different like, what's different about you um and so we had a little conversation a, a, about um the differences but what what my what i'm trying to get to is Though there's not Milus, and though there's not Momos, and though there's not Calvins, and though we're plowing in hard, hard territory, um, we believe one day that there's going to be people that are going to be raised up, and that skate ministry looks fun, and that skate ministry is exciting, but there's, God is really, really doing stuff with the skateboarders in a place that's unreached and unengaged. Um, you know, we're dealing with you know, um, you know, 11 million people in the city, and some of these skateboarders, I've had conversations with them, they don't know what the gospel is. They have seen the crosses because there's churches all over, um, but it's a subculture that's missed. And they have seen Western movies, so they've heard of Jesus, but they don't know what it is. And so we're excited for the future because we believe that with the relationships that we've been building and with what we have coming on in the future that we are going to see people come to know the Lord. Um, Challenges. Cool. Um, Maybe we should have did challenges first and then right? victories. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, COVID regulations. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's had their version of adjusting right to COVID. No matter where we're at in the world, it's been challenging. It's been difficult, and for us as well, our union. And um, and yeah, I'm a big part of our ministry. Like I said, was hosting teams, and. Uh, and uh, the previous picture you saw us with a bunch of skateboarders, that was the last team we got to host. We gathered a team of people from all different parts of the world, and there was actually a girl we had been discipling when we were in China. She, uh, we actually brought her along with us to continue that discipleship. She was able to be a part of that team, and we all went to Japan together um, because we were going to be doing an outreach for the Olympics, the 2020 Olympics. Um, that didn't happen because borders got closed, but... Um, <coughs> We were able to build a lot of new relationships in that and encourage um, younger skateboarding believers in their faith. And so, uh, yeah, COVID obviously shut down a really big part of that side of what we do. Um, and But even through that, and, and another side of uh, challenges is that through that, borders being closed, usually we would be also be able to get other young skateboarding believing interns in to come and help us encourage local people and so th that was also a part of our ministry is to partner with other people and those people usually were new in their faith they were usually american or or from europe or and they would come and and we would kind of continue the discipleship with them well well they would help us kind of um, build relationships with the locals so there was there was this um, unified our kind of um, relationship system. system with that and um when those borders cl closed, um, that also kind of cut off that line. But um, I do want to share one really cool thing, though. 
in the midst of that, even though we couldn't get people in to kind of help us with our ministry, and it really just came down to me and TJ, and there were no more teams to come and help us, and there were no more people to come and intern, to intern with us. Um, we were just really praying, and, and I mean, through that, we were pretty defeated, and there was a lot of doubt, like, why are we here? What are we doing? Um, is there still purpose for us here? And uh, as we continued, we just really felt like God was telling us to, to just really focus on the local church and serve the local church. And that's just really what we've been doing is just serving the local church. And so um, I do PowerPoint on Sundays and I learned what that was. I didn't even know what that was. Shout out to PowerPoint people. I know you struggle now. <laughs> but um, yeah, that and uh, then we were doing small groups and creating that um, thing. But um, you know, there was this side of skateboarding that was our heart, but we were very alone and I, TJ was very alone, isolated in that. He would go in by himself faithfully every week. Um, but they're um, the pastor of the church in the city. He just he when you look at him, he looks like the farthest thing from a skateboarder. But he had he just got such a passion for um, what God was doing through our family and through TJ and the vision that God gave him that he started to skateboard. And he says, I want to help you plow that field. I see the need. And um, he goes out there and he hurts himself so much trying to skate. <laughs> and it is, it is so funny, but it is just so moving just to watch God move on this. And he's older. He's got to be like, I, I mean, he's not older, older. Like we're, yeah, he's probably our age, so I guess we're older. <laughs> he's, he's, he's maybe a couple years older than us. He's like 40, but yeah. And <laughs> for a new skateboarder, though, too. So it's like, so it's just really kind of scary to see him get on a board when he's never done it before. Um, and so, um, yeah, but he does, he, he goes out there and he's, uh, he's building relationships yeah. now and he's saying, Hey man, if you need translators, you can, I'll, I'll give you who's ever on my team. You can use that. If you need me, I will, I will take my time to come and, and be a part of what you're doing. And it's just like, man, even though with the borders closed and even with that line being cut off, God has put it on people's hearts inside, inside what, inside the, our space to be able to, to help us carry that, that burden help us carry that vision and what God is doing, which has been such an encouragement to us to see that God still, right when we're just like, oh, why, what are we here? We need, we should just go home everything. and questioning everything. Um, he's like, no, I'm going to raise up people within. Even though that's closed, I'm going to raise up people within in the most unlikely ways. And it's just been, that was a blessing. That was just a really big blessing to see God's hand move in that way. Uh, it's funny. His name is Chris, Pastor Chris. And uh, I told Chris, like, hey, Chris, I'm really struggling with this one guy. He's, like, really mean. Everybody know he knows he's mean. He's really good at skateboarding. Like, hit me and the, the skateboarder will just, like, we'll try tricks together. But, like, I cannot break through with this guy. Like, I cannot. He's just, like, stone wall. And he's like, okay. And he sends me a message. And, says, like, and the, the, the skateboarder's name is Adi. He, and he sends me a message, like, two weeks later. He's like, hey, Adi's giving me skate lessons. I got in. <laughs> I was just like, you would, dude. Like, you would do that. And so, like, that's his heart. It's like just to go in and just, like, really plow that. Um, COVID regulations and adjusting. Uh, we were on a tourist visa. A tourist visa is, uh, a visa is what allows you to be in the country. Um, a tourist visa gave us 90 days inside Taiwan. Uh, we were strategically using a 90-day visa so that we can go to the Philippines and to the Japans because we were trying to raise up people to be skate leaders in their skate community. Um, and uh, when COVID hit, we had to stop that as well. Um, and that put us in 30-day increments, meaning um, every 30 days, they were giving us an extension and allowing us to stay in Taiwan, or we had to pack our bags and leaves. So from March last year until November this year, it was like, is 18 months? Yeah. We, were, we were living on a 30-day timeline. Um, it was really, really exhausting. It was really, really tiring. It, it tested our faith. And even though I, I had a lot of people in my corner that were giving me, like, counseling and, like, accountability, and they were like, TJ, logically everything looks like you guys are going to throw in the towel and come home. And I would tell them, but God is telling me something inside. Mm -hmm. And though logically doors are closing and though logically we're not seeing the fruit we wanted to see and, the, like, it's telling us to come home inside, I believe God is doing something um, and through that, um, we watched a lot of people just say, hey, we're just going to go home. Forget these 30-day extensions. I can't live on it. I just need to go. Um, and we felt like God was telling us to stay. Um, and I remember one time uh, Katrina was at Costco, and she was looking at a plant. And she gave me a call, and she said, TJ, can I get a plant? 
And I said, it's just a plant. Get the dumb plant and come home. Like, it's late. I don't want you driving on these roads at night. Just get the plant and come home. And she was like, no, no, no. You got to understand, if we buy this plant, are we going to at this plant, are we going to be here in 15 days to take care of this? Um, and in the middle of Costco, I'm on the, I'm in the, the, on the other side of the phone, but she's in Costco, and we just had a conversation. Okay, well, are we going to extend our, our parking spot that we pay for? What are we going to do about groceries next week? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do about rent? Do we need to tell the landlord that we need to, he needs to find a new tenant here soon? Uh, what are we going to do about, you know, school? What, what, you know, we just had this really long conversation because we were in limbo and we didn't know what to do. Um, Katrina ended up buying the plant, and um, and that's like that thing right there. We look at that and it's like, man, that is a reminder of God's goodness because when borders continue to stay closed and we got challenged and we were like, we don't know what we're doing. God, should we go home? What are we going to do? We were questioning everything. I was looking into like, what am I going to do if we move back to America? How am I going to financially provide for my family? I'm looking into all these things. And I just remember, I just feel the Lord just, and I just wrote down in my, in my journal, like, I believe God is calling us to grow roots. And I remember getting up from my knees in prayer and just the first thing I saw was that plant that plant that grows roots, that plant that is now a little bit bigger than it was a couple months ago, that plant. And I just remember, like, God is saying, okay, we're planting roots here in Taiwan. Even though logically it doesn't feel, feel like we're supposed to do it, and even though everything around us is kind of, like, crumbling, inside God was saying, no, I'm going to smooth these things out. Um, and he did those things, and he's in the process of doing those things yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so Amen. adjusting wasn't super fun. Uh, uh, other challenges, and we're running low on time. I think we got about ten minutes left. Okay. Okay. Homeschooling. Sorry, yeah. boys. <laughs> we're gonna bash <laughs> on homeschooling for a bit. <laughs> no, it is challenging, though. Um, you know, I'm I'm not an educator, and I'm actually not educated. If you know my story, uh, you know that that's not something I was able to accomplish. One of the things I was able to accomplish in my life, and um, so when when homeschooling. God put it before us, it was just like, you know, that was really one of the things. It was actually two things I had told God that I'll do, I'll, go, I'll do anything you want. I'll go anywhere you tell me to go. Just don't send me to Taiwan and don't make me do homeschooling. I'm in Taiwan doing homeschooling. <laughs> and you guys may ask, like, why specifically Taiwan? I, I went on a mission trip there in 2014, and it was just like that trip was I had the hardest time. And um, that was the trip that told me I'm never doing missions again. But and obviously I did. <laughs> like I'm here. But it was funny because those were the some of the two things I was like, God, I'll do this if not Taiwan and not that. And I'm in Taiwan homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was. It's it's. I mean, and so it's it's a challenge. I'm learning with my kids. You know, I'm learning along with them. Um, they were three years behind because um, they were in Chinese school for three years, and so. Um, that um, they were three years behind in English academics. And so as, an, as a person who's not an educator or who's really very educated, I was like, it really was the Holy Spirit that had to guide us every step of the way. And within a year and a half, my kids were fully caught up. Um, it was only by God's grace that that happened. Um, it was a lot of hard work from these boys and from us, but and it was a lot of learning, a lot of tears, a lot of fights, but um, God was there in the midst of that carrying our family and guiding us through that really difficult process. And we have, we've found a normal, we found a normalcy now that, that kind of suits us, but it is something that does take up a lot of our time. Um, you know, TJ is gone during the week, you know, going into Taipei and, and um, building those relationships and doing stuff for the ministry and whatnot, and so a lot of times I'm, my week is just mostly homeschool, and, um, and then we study Chinese, we go into the city, which is about an hour drive away, and then we do our, we, we meet with a, a Chinese teacher for, to learn, to keep learning Chinese, and then that's when we do a lot of our ministry stuff, that's when Sam Baker happens, and we do PowerPoint, or um, he's on the photo team, um, or either we'll run our small groups during that time. And so, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's something that does take up a lot of time, and um, God has been so good to us throughout that process, but it is, a, it is a challenge, and I think one of the, I mean, challenges that we have is that, well, like I said before, vaguely, is that, you know, really they only kind of have each other. Um, that's one thing that, as we live in the fisherman village, there's really no kids that they can come and hang out and play with, and so their social side of things is something that we've been really praying in and praying for, and uh, Milu, God has actually used Milu to help that, because she 
her, her ministry is youth, and so he, um, we've been able to bring them around a lot more Taiwanese kids, and they get more social interactions. But it has been a really long season of it just being them, you know, um, and just kind of us, and so in different ways. And so, um, yeah, I think as we move into our, one of our goals, and we'll talk about it soon for the future, is, um, is to go from the Fisherman Village into the city, because a lot of our ministry is in the city. Um, there'll be a lot more opportunity for them in the city, maybe even a school they could attend, um, but definitely more social interactions sure. that we're really praying for and hoping for as we move in and throughout this season. Um, I, I always like to remind them that they're not tag-alongs, and, our, and our, you know, as parents, sometimes we think we get so caught up in what we're doing, but we're believing that this season was challenging for, for them as well, but that God is going to use this season for them in the future, and that there is much a part of Tamales in Asia and, as me and Katrina, and that God is going to do something special and unique in and through them. Mm -hmm. And so though it has been a rough season for them as well, we believe God is going to use it. Mm -hmm. um, future? Um, yeah, so the last 18 months, I have been, uh, well, God has... We had always planned on starting a skateboard company because a skateboard company gives us an opportunity um, to, it legitimizes us. You know, if I just show up and start talking about Jesus or I talk about a nonprofit, you know, nonprofit puts people here and the, the, the recipients in Asia here. And so uh, uh, company equals the playing field a little bit and just like allows us to serve. Um, and so we're going to be starting Signal Skate Company, and that's really just what a, a tool we want to use to disciple people mm -hmm. and to be a bridge from a uh, skate park to the church. And so we launched a fundraiser. We've already got all of the, the stuff done for the company to be registered. We are here now because we are no longer on a tourist visa because we are now on an uh, entrepreneur visa because we have done all the paperwork and got Signal Skate Co. Uh, registered in uh, Taiwan. Uh, so that's exciting. So young skateboarder dreams, right? Like, oh, snap. I, I like didn't make it far in skateboarding, but God is using skateboarding now and, and the business side of it to like reach uh, skaters. Uh, pretty soon we're going to be moving to Taipei. We have to go back to Taiwan. We have to finish our quarantine. And then we're going to start um, looking for a place to move from the village to the city. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of already looked. Um, we've done a little bit of planning. We know the general area of where we want to go, um, but we're just believing that God has that, that one special place for us um, and serve the church. Katrina talked about um, serving the church, small groups, PowerPoint, whatever we can do. Um, just as a, as a Christian, I always found it important to serve the church. So if I'm handing out bulletins, if I'm doing PowerPoint, if she's doing whatever she's, she wanted to do that God has called us to, hers is powerful. I just always found it was important to be a Christian and serve the church. Um, it just showed the commitment. It showed that you valued the community, and it showed that you valued on a Sunday. So um, we want to continue serving the church. Yeah. Um, you want to say anything else about the future? Yeah, and just, I think that's it. I think just, yeah, like TJ said, just being a bridge from the skate park to the church, that's also what we really feel called to do is just be a bridge and continue to help um, bring people to that place, you know, so that they can hear more, um, yeah, hmm. about God. And, and then I think finances. Um, before I get into this, like, this is, I'm not fundraising. I was very clear with uh, Jeannie and Pastor Stan that I'm not supposed to fundraise. They had some ideas for us to fundraise. This is just us communicating finances. Um, as missionaries, we've learned that we ha always have to live with open hands. Um, and we have to have integrity in our finances, and we have to be accountable to the people that support us. And so because you guys are a supporting church and some supporters are here, um, we are accountable to you guys. And so the stuff that we talk about in our finances, this is a part of the future and a part of the things that you'll be seeing as you hear more about our family and as we communicate um, some stuff through email. So our personal, uh, we are raising our personal budget by 3000 dollars um, because Taipei is extremely expensive. Um, we have a normal size house in Taiwan in comparative to America. Um, we pay $498 for that space. We're going to like shrink in size by like, what is it, like one third? Mm -hmm. We're going to have like one third size of house, but we're going to be paying like minimum $1,500 US. And so those are the, the type of things that are going to adjust. When those things adjust, like God is where we look to God for provision. 
Um, and then in terms of ministry, um, $50,000 for the official like launch for like the dream launch that we want to do for Signal. Um, of course, if we don't have it, we're going to continue, continue to move forward. Um, living overseas, we've learned to use whatever we have, and then God takes that and just multiplies it. Um, and so in the future, if you read our emails or you hear communications from church staff, like those are the things that you'll be hearing, as well as us moving, skate company, and serving the church. Um, questions? It's your time. So do you guys have any questions for us? Ha. <laughs> you want to share you where your share shiner, where shiner came, came from? from? Your, your, your little black eye. He hit a, him and his brother were wrest wrestling, and he on grandma's couch. And he hit and she has the ran cup into and hit the plastic cup holder yes. that was inside inside the cup. Yeah. <laughs> Just his face. You know. <laughs> Grandma would have been mad. Uh, any any other questions? Yes. Good question. Great yeah. question. Thank you for asking. Um, questions. We are going to have our own product, but we are also going to buy the machines. So um, when I was l figuring out what the business plan was for the company, I did a lot of research. I learned what worked for a lot of companies. I, I learned what didn't. What didn't work was outsourcing because outsourcing was so expensive. So I was um, advised by multiple people to buy the screen printing machines and print yourself, to buy the skateboard printing machine and print yourself, to buy the vinyl printing machine and print the stickers yourself because those are the, the apparel, the stickers, and the boards is what we're going to be selling. So that creates us an avenue of income to be able to get it into the skateboarding market. What is untapped in Taiwan from the research and the market research that we've done is that everybody is outsourcing to mainland China. Um, and so we will be buying our boards from mainland China, um, but we will have the machines to print in Taiwan. And so us having the machines is going to allow us to make our own product, be it, but be able to outsource to skate shops and skate companies in Taiwan. And so we will be making our stuff, and Lord willing, we're going to be making their stuff as well. Um, our Which gives an opportunity to build relationships yes. with more people in that community. And um, yeah. So us being able to make our own stuff gives us a platform in the skate community with the actual skateboarders. However, um, what I've learned is that the community leaders are the skate shop owners and the sponsored skateboarders. And so we want an avenue in with them as well, and we'll be able to produce their stuff as well as our stuff. And then churches like Aroma Church and Fulong Church and other ministries, parachurch ministries that we're hoping to partner with, if they need anything printed, that creates another avenue of income because it's going to be really, really hard for us to, to learn how to survive just off of dealing with broke skateboarders. <laughs> okay, So, you know, if we're able to get in with the coffee shop ministries or the other YWAM ministries or you know, if we're able to print for the skate companies and the skate shops, then that creates three avenues of income. Because A lot of the churches, sorry, I'll do also... Um, they um, run a lot of camps. That's one bit also a bigger, also a bigger part of our ministry. Sure. We didn't really mention right now, but we do a lot of camps with, um, especially the village church. Um, he has a lot of relationships with a lot of the schools and those villages, and so we actually in Thanksgiving and Christmas, Christmas <laughs> and um, Easter, we, they do a ton of, of camps and they do a lot of shirts, and all those kids get shirts, and they always outsource that to somebody else and they've already talked about how you know when when this starts happening that they they would want to to outsource it to us um, which would be yeah yeah so they do tons of shirts and so mm -hmm. that is another avenue of income but for them yeah does that answer your question okay sweet <laughs> I'm excited about these things so I can go on <laughs> um, any other questions? So do you guys, I don't know if you guys have ever heard business is missions. It's, it's a term and, and it's more and more becoming more and more popular um, in the last decade or so. But um, yeah, even the church that we, we work with in the city, they, they started out as business is missions. They have a coffee shop and that's how they get people in and how they get to the community and stuff like that. But then they use that coffee, then that, that coffee shop is also a church. 
And so they're a church, but they're also a coffee shop. And so um, like even within the budget that we talked about, that budget inside of it, it already has a year's wages of, of a local person's um, so that we can, they can come and work for us, but it also their can wages. be a tool, um, their, wa their mm -hmm. wages, but it also can be a tool for us to disciple them. So yeah. that inside that budget is a year's wages. Because we actually already have $20,000 that we have raised that God has provided for the company. Um, and so we're going to be buying some machines. We're going to be uh, trying to get an office space and uh, X, Y, Z so that we can get everything launched. Mm. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's every year we get um, we get renewed, and so for the last twelve months I've been um, with a lawyer meeting weekly, and hashing out all of our immigration stuff, and uh, he's been helping register the business, and once the business was registered, I had to go do X Y Z, and then once that was done, and then eventually step number ten led to us getting a, a visa. So I am on the visa as entrepreneur, and they are my dependents on the visa so it's not individual, it's not individual. No, no, no 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 so one of the cool things about taiwan is that um once we hit a, a a financial mark after three years of business we get full residency meaning we won't have to be in the visa process anymore that we just become residents we will be able to do everything except vote mm -hmm. and so we're praying that you know all those things uh continue to happen because covid showed immigration laws change quite often mm -hmm. <laughs> we can speak a little bit, yeah, yeah. And it's grown, and I think because most of our time is in, I, I'm in, the, and I'm doing homeschooling and stuff like that, um, he gets more time, I think, with local people interacting. So our Chinese teacher will say, TJ can speak more because he has more practice, but actually my Chinese sounds better. Because huh. I'm... <laughs> She's flexing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is super true. Well, but I just I realized I can't that speak as much as him because he uses it more. I don't get to use it as much, and I'm pretty like OCD about it. So I'm I can get really, I can feel really silly really quickly about it and kind of clam up because you know I'm I feel like I'm really messing it up most of the time when I try. But we can get by, and it's definitely grown a lot more since we've moved from China to Taiwan. For sure. Yeah, but I think when we get into the city, we'll have more opportunity to to um, to sit down with. Uh, there's more opportunities over there to learn Chinese. There's more schools and more classes at universities that we'll be able to sign up for for us and for the kids. So um, yeah, yeah. So no, but they were in China because in China they were in school full time, and um, they actually were pretty almost like, it felt like they were almost pretty fluent, like they were able to really communicate and understand. But since we took them out of that. And focused on English and education, because they were three years behind. And they don't really have a lot of opportunity to hang out with local kids, um, which has changed in the last couple months, but still mostly not. Um, they lost a lot of it, which is the sad side of, th of that. And so um, we're hoping to get, but they do, they do have a desire to learn it more and more, especially since we've been partnering with Milu on this, um, these youth outreaches, and we've been around more local kids in that way. They both have had more of a desire to want to learn it, and I've asked our teacher who's teaching us, hey, can you teach us Chinese too? And so that's something that we're, and there'll be more opportunity in the city as well for them to do that, so that's, Another, yeah. And they didn't forget a lot. If there's a young kid playing Pokemon Go, they'll just <laughs> be right in there. <laughs> with them. And so, um, um, in, in terms of speaking Chinese, just like Chinese, Mandarin is a tonal language, so shi, 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 shi. Those are four different words in Chinese. So, um, to an untrained ear, that sounds all, all the same. Um, and so, I've learned that if you just speak really, really fast, you don't have to use the tone. Um, and that true. has <laughs> really ruined my tones. That's <laughs> why so, they say he So that's why I can learn the vocabulary <laughs> word. Um, so they just need contextual clues. For sure. I think so. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've become pretty professional at miming. 
over this yeah, season, yeah, over yeah. these six years of being missionaries. Like we almost can get by just by miming sometimes. Or uh, mm-hmm. a, a word isn't mm, but mm means yes, no, and maybe not. It, it's contextual, right? And so I have just been, so they'll say something and, and I've learned that learning a language is like playing Legos with words. You use one word and you get another word and then you can hopefully put them together and hopefully it makes it. And so I've known many times I'm like, they're speaking to me like, mm, 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 because you mm in the middle of someone's conversation. And I've left, I think I left conversations where they thought I understood everything, but I think I got about 30% of it. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, for sure, please. absolutely. I'd, yeah, oh, language yes. development is a, is a big yes. part of our, our prayer request. Yes, and then sure. our mind, because some people are just, I mean, really good at learning languages. We're, we're not, we're not. And, um, you know, uh, one thing that we have noticed is that we've come onto the mission field with kids. A lot of times we struggled with comparison because there was a lot of foreigners where their Chinese were really good. And actually we've realized that all those foreigners where their Chinese was really good, they came on the mission field single. <laughs> and they had that time. And they didn't have, you know, a husband or a wife or a family to kind of do That does take away and that does deplete your energy on how much you're able to invest into things, you know. Um, so uh, that's – and the other – we know one other family who came in, also with a family, came in with three children, and he's been there 10 years, and his Chinese is also really bad. <laughs> but So we're hoping that, you know, I mean, we, we can, we, we, see, we see the need and where it needs to be, where their sacrifices need to be to make it better. Um, but just being in our location, the where we are, that's, it just makes it really hard to do that. Um, but yeah, and then homeschooling also kind of makes it a little a bit challenging, more challenging. And so... Um, to give that time but yeah it is definitely a real big desire for us to to be more fluent in that and um so yes please be praying for us in that big and, time and our foundation is there mm-hmm. we just we just really want god to just multiply that yeah yes amen. yes i mean amen awesome. please yes Praise god. that'd be amazing um do we have time for one more guys Maybe I both can. can. But um, yeah, um, oh, you want to try it first? Um, logically, everything looked like I, we were supposed to come home. Mm. I mean, I thought the vision that God had given me was completely shattered. Um, and so when it doesn't look good on the outside, that's when we went to the word. And that's when we started fasting and seeking God. And that's when God's word started giving us like confirmation and affirmation. Um, to move forward in, in what he had for us. And so um, I know that, you know, so many of us face challenges, and it really, really just all go. It's such a basic, basic thing. Prayer, read, fast. Prayer, read, fast. Mm. Serve. Um, and so um, I know in my life, when I did, I got fired from Leprinos, like wrongly terminated, and, and I didn't know what to do until I started serving the church. When I started serving the church is when God started opening my eyes up to what he wanted me to do. Um, and then when we didn't know what we were doing in Taiwan and we were questioning everything and it was a really dark time, we started serving the church. And when we started serving the church is when God started showing us what, I, what we were doing. So if there's anything that you guys are struggling with and you have lack of direction, I would encourage you to serve the church um, because that's when God begins to start showing things. I think you hit it. Uh, Since six. 2015. April 1st, 2015. April 1st. Because April. I remember I was going to tell my mom, April Fools are not going. Yeah. But then we really left. That would have been worked. sad. <laughs> <laughs> Double the heartbreak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we're going on seven. Yeah. So about seven years now. Yeah. Anything else? This guy? Please, thank you. And I know what you have done in the past. If you've been led by the Lord, come on up, man, and let's surround them. Let's support them with our our Christian brothers and sisters in love and just pray for you guys, man. We are so happy to be here. Yes, please, please. Thank you.
God, I want to carry a special to Kaz and Kip. Mm. Um, it's not easy mm-hmm. being a, a kid, being a teenager. It's not easy um, just growing up and, and mm-hmm. to be growing up without having a lot of interaction with friends um, is, is even harder. And so I just pray that in this next season, you would bless them. Mm, yes, Lord. With a lot of, of good friends that they can encourage and that they can be encouraged from. Being a teacher and a witch, and also being an outlet for your husband mm-hmm. and her personal relationships with other people. When so much of what you're called to do is in a place we have no clue in, mm-hmm. we don't know what we're doing. But that's good because mm-hmm. then we don't do it our way, yeah. and we do it your way. Yeah, I think so. Is it me or is it you that gave her the place? of leadership Mm. or is it you that came to the altar like we know we're not making a foundation here we have a foundation of our service of our vocation and our church from this church Mm. and if we have truth and love for her and her family Mm. for her future husband for her future community i pray that you would bless them with horizontal relationships that they can build together even though the cards say you're not, you're, you're praying with them. Mm-hmm. Things that you, they may or may not be able to speak to you, mm-hmm. but they're being attentive to you. Mm-hmm. And we know that you love them and mm-hmm. you are nurturing. Mm-hmm. And I pray that you would be with her all of her educational needs yeah. 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 and for her family well-being yeah. and for her major needs mm-hmm. and that you would just let her know that you are strong in your faith yeah, and yeah. you yeah. are strong in who is you mm. and that you're strong in who you are mm. and to give her that special place in your life and yeah. just bless her and you would be with her mm. and you would have an excellent time mm. I want to thank you God for today and the opportunity to put faces to names that been praying for us. It is such a privilege to meet this family and to now be able to more effectively pray for their ministry. Um, it's, it's such a privilege and I don't want to take it lightly. so much to carry right now. There's so many emotions that just run through us. And we are honored and so blessed, so grateful that we get to be a supporting church for the Tamayo family. And um, we do appreciate, Lord, whenever they'll send a, a, a video or something, let them just know what's going on, but just having them here. Mm-hmm seeing them, Lord, and listening to them just, it just enhances, Lord, our, our joy. Mm-hmm. And Lord, we just, we just lift them up to you, God. Um, thank you we can learn from them. I love, Lord, what, what, what TJ said, that when so often when we don't know what to do, where to go, mm-hmm. serve the church. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, God, help us, help us to do that. And Lord, I, I agree, Lord, with you in prayer for Kaz and Kip. Mm-hmm. You know, bless these guys. Um, they're just following the parents, doing the best they can. But Lord, you have something very special for them. Yes. They're learning so much. Yeah. And you have.
have a purpose and a ministry and a role for their lives as well. So protect them. Mm -hmm. Let them just develop good friends in a very natural way. Mm -hmm. Just bless this family. Again, Lord, there's just so much to say. But right now, we just want to say thank you to them. Mm -hmm. and thank you for us. Thank you for this new year that we all have looking forward to. What a beautiful God you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For what we had just seen and what we had just heard, um, all glory to God. Uh, I hope you enjoyed as much as I did uh, the wonderful privilege of seeing and hearing from the Tamayos. All glory be to God. Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive unless the Lord does raise the house in vain its builders strive to you who boast tomorrow's gain tell me what is your life amidst that vanishes at dawn all glory be that's right all glory all glory be to christ our king all glory be to Christ, his rule and reign will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. Would you stand, everyone? His will be done, his kingdom come on earth as is a
be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. What a great way to start a brand new year, isn't it? So next week, just a reminder, we will be uh, taking communion, so please um, prepare your heart. Listen to the Lord speak to you as he prepares for you for next week, and um, have a great week. And I am so looking forward to what God has in store for us as a church, and the to miles what God has in store for you guys as well. We're on this journey with you. Thank you so much. God bless you, everyone. Have a great day. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak.